afternoon. This is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and we have with us today Cami Ballock, who is a happy hormone doctor. Ta- Cami, tell us what that means. Yes, well, I have a PhD as a naturopathic doctor. I've been doing this for 10 years, and I just wrote a book called Making Happy Happen on how to unleash our happy hormones every day. So we have several chemicals in our body, the chemical messengers of the brain, that are our happy hormones. And in order to be happy and balanced and feel good, we need to have all those hormones balanced all the time. So what I look at are the serotonin, that is our happy hormone, and then also our dopamine and our melatonin and our GABA and our adrenaline. And those are the hormones I balance when I say I'm the happy hormone doctor. A lot of times when I say that, people are thinking estrogen and progesterone, and those are very important too, and I actually look at those. But the main things that we want to have are our adrenal glands working for us, our thyroid working, everything balanced so that our hormones are balanced, and then we feel better. So and how do you what look I at, look at is how to keep our neurotransmitters happy. And do you look at that by doing blood tests or how? I, I do several different diagnostic tests. Um, I have an office in Colorado that I do saliva lab testing with, and we can send saliva samples off and then see what hormones are out of whack and just see what we need to balance them. But without doing a test, I have a quiz online. Um, my website is makinghappyhappen.com. And I have a neurotransmitter quiz on there that you can take and see what hormones may be out of balance for you. Because, for instance, if your energy is really low and you're not sleeping right, we would look at more the adrenaline and the melatonin. If you're depressed, we look at more of the serotonin. So I don't necessarily like to look at symptoms, but from the quiz, we could tell or you can tell mm-hmm. which ones are off and which, what hormones you would need to balance. And then from that, what I do is uh, with the online quiz, you can just take the quiz and see what you need. A lot of times, what it is that's bringing us out of balance is a deficiency. And so I also um, am really big on nutrition and whole food supplements. So I look at what hormones are out of balance and then what minerals you are deficient in that you need to balance them. And, for instance, like our neurotransmitters, which are the major chemicals of the brain, they need amino acids to work. And a lot of us are deficient in amino acids. And then our other hormones, like the serotonin, that's our happy hormone, our endorphins, which are our all-is-well hormone, our um, GABA, which is our cool transmitter, which cools us down when we're feeling a little fiery or our brain is over-firing. All of those need magnesium and calcium and iodine. So we look at what mineral is going to balance you out. And sometimes it's as simple as that. It's not even that you would need a hormone cream or that you need a bunch of pills. Sometimes it's just vitamins and minerals, and that's all it all, wow. all it takes to balance you out. So. I'm making notes because I have sleep problems. Okay, yeah. <laughs> a lot of women have sleep problems because of a melatonin deficiency or a GABA deficiency. And GABA is the G-A-B-A. Um, it stands for gamma antrobilic acid, but it's our, our calming transmitter. And so we need to have our GABA and our progesterone and our melatonin all balanced in order to sleep. And a lot of times what I look at with women, especially – um, like premenopausal, menopausal, and postmenopausal is when we start to lose those hormones, when we start to lose progesterone and our adrenals are working too much because of stress or they're working too much from an illness and we start to get deficient, a lot of times all you need is to take some GABA, it's the GABA from a health food store with mm-hmm. some magnesium, 
and if you need to, melatonin, and then that will help you sleep. But it's not just that we want to help you sleep. It's that when you sleep, you're repairing your body, and then you feel better the next day. But the biggest thing is when those hormones are balanced, sleeping is just showing us that they are balanced. It's just showing us that right. your body's working. And so when you're actually sleeping, that means your body's working correctly in the sympathetic nervous system, working correctly during the day for you too. And that's, that's the biggest part is we want you to be balanced during the day and balanced during the night. Right. So, okay. That's yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And I actually just bought some of that GABA stuff. <laughs> I must have read about it. I can't remember why I bought it. I was looking at the bottle thinking, why did I buy that? <laughs> and, yeah, the GABA is really good. You just need like 100 milligrams at night, and you want to take it at bed. And then if it's not enough, you could try other things to balance you out. But the GABA is the cooling transmitter. It's the calming you down during periods of stress. So it's really good to take um, for women during periods of stress if you're stressed during the day. But it's especially helpful to take at night. And what it does is stop your neurotransmitters for, uh, from overfiring. So okay. when you're having trouble sleeping, a lot of the time it's the laying in bed awake can't go to sleep because your brain is thinking everything's overfiring. And what the GABA does is just calm down those neurotransmitters so you're not overfiring. So, yeah. And actually, as a naturopathic doctor, sleep can be a lot of other things, too. It can be from your nervous system. It could be from parasites. It can be from a virus. So I look at all of those different areas. But most of the time, it's just a hormonal imbalance because of the deficiencies of how we live our lives now and just being overstressed during the day. And you say that uh, you have three easy steps for making happy happen. Yeah, well, my book is full of different chapters, and what I look at are the physical, the chemical, and the mental side of our bodies to be happy. We have to be happy on all three levels or it doesn't work. If we're happy on a, working on ourselves on a physical level but not on a chemical level, for instance, if we're exercising and getting those endorphins but we're still unhormonally, unhormonally balanced, we mm -hmm. still won't be happy. And so I, I start with the physical aspect and I'm, you know, as a naturopathic doctor, I'm really big on the chemical balancing of our body, meaning the chemical messengers of our brain and our cells working correctly. But then, too, it's also a mental part. So my three steps are one of each of those. Um, I start with the physical and recommend that you get some sort of physical activity every day. Do something for yourself. I call it filling your own gas tank. Because I think a lot of women, especially myself and all my patients, we are constantly doing things for everybody else, and we're using up our gas. For instance, like if we were a car and we had a gas tank, we would be running on empty all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people to check your gas gauge and see, are you running on full or are you running on empty? Because most of us are running on empty, but we're still trying – to run and we're, we're moms, we're wives, we have jobs, we have to take care of the house and there, we're not taking care of ourselves. So the number one thing I recommend is to do something for yourself every day for just 10 or 15 minutes, whether it's go for a walk or read a book or get some fresh air, do some meditation, do some yoga, do something on a physical side for yourself. And it doesn't even have to be exercise. It can be relaxing as well. But something that's going to fill your own gas tank, something that's going to help you regenerate and renew yourself. So that's um, the number one thing. And two is to be chemically balanced. So if you're, if you're taking care of yourself, but you're still feeling that something is off, you're still feeling unbalanced, then I do recommend um, taking a, my online quiz or seeing somebody 
trying to get your own hormones balanced is a really big part of it. And, and where is that? Is, where is that quiz located? Where, it's on my website. It's makinghappyhappen.com, and it's under the neurotransmitter okay. link, under the neurotransmitter quiz. Okay. There's there's several different quizzes, and then it tells you what hormones are unbalanced and what you can do about it right now. So right. the biggest reason with that is nowadays all of us are really deficient. I mean, I... I have a degree in nutrition, and I eat really healthy. And when I test myself, I am still deficient in vitamins and minerals if I'm not taking them every day. And most of my patients are deficient. And the reason being is because even when we're trying to eat healthy, the ground is deficient, our vegetables are deficient, we're overproducing, so the dirt doesn't have the minerals in it for us, so our vegetables and and fruits and stuff aren't packed full of minerals like they used to be. And that's why it's really important that we supply it so that our bodies get what they need. Oh, and then third is being balanced um, or taking care of yourself on an emotional level. I'm really big on positive thinking and affirmations and making sure that you're making happy happen for yourself by learning to have gratitude and learning to be content, learning how to have happy relationships, learning how to have boundaries, learning to say no, all of that plays an important role in your happiness as well. Wow. Okay. And where could we buy your book if someone wanted to buy your book? My book is available everywhere, um, anywhere books are sold. So, okay. Yeah. Great. And on Amazon? On Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, in the books, in all the bookstores. Okay. It's actually at Walmart and Target as well. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Um, what are some things that stress steals from us? And what does that mean? Yes. Well, I like to... I mean, we all know that stress puts weight on our shoulders. We know that stress is hard on our bodies. We've all been told that stress is um, hard on us and steals our health. But there's actually, as a doctor, three things that stress steals from us that I don't think people really look at. The number one thing is stress actually steals your nutrients from you. So what I mean by that is when your body is stressed, your your nutrition is not absorbed as well. Your digestive system slows down. If you've ever noticed when you're stressed that you have digestive issues, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. And when that happens, your digestive system actually slows down, stops absorbing the food. So when that happens, it stops absorbing your nutrients. So one of the things is stress steals your nutrients from you. The other is it actually steals your oxygen from you. When we're stressed, we don't breathe as deeply as we should, and we don't get the oxygen from the air like we should, so that our bodies actually slow down from that as well. And then the third thing that stress actually steals from us is just our hormonal balance and our life and our health. When you're stressed, your body starts making adrenaline and starts making more cortisol and starts making more stress hormones, and when you're in that, flight or fight mode, your whole body and your whole nervous system shut down. And it's just, it's just a downward spiral. You start to slow down. You start to stop making new cells like you should. Your cellular metabolism slows down. It's actually why they say that people that are stressed are aging faster because you have quicker cell breakdown. And then you actually look older from stress as well because your cells are breaking down more and more and you're making new cells wow. faster and your cellular metabolism is changed. So it actually, it actually steals a lot from us. And that's why I think it's really important to learn how to handle your stress and deal with your stress and help your body deal with stress. I mean, we all have stress. We all have jobs. We all live in this really fast-paced, busy world these days. 
But the key is to learn how to deal with it, how to keep your your adrenal glands, which are your stress glands, happy so that they're working because if they're not working for you, you're not only going to just feel really fatigued, really tired, but your entire body starts to slow down and shut down. And that's when disease actually can come into your body. So we don't want that either. No. So it's really important to stop it. Don't let stress steal it from you. And um, how can you, what can you do about panic attacks? Yes, well, panic attacks are when the body has too much of a flight or fight, has too much adrenaline in the body, and it comes all at once. It's the adrenaline is our motivator hormone. It's our stimulator hormone. And so panic attacks are when we have too much of that. The, the main thing that I like to tell people is if you're prone to panic attacks, it's really important that you are on, again, supplements, because I'm really big on supplements, but on some amino acid supplements. And amino acids are just proteins. They're the building blocks for our health. And so it's really important to take amino acids every day and then also to take some fish oils and some magnesium because our brain is made up of 70% fat. And if we're not giving our body that fat, our brains don't function like they should and it can cause us to have panic attacks. So a calming oil, like it's actually called tuna oil, is a really good omega-3 oil that actually calms down your nervous system. And when you take that every day, it will keep your body filling in a normal area and not spiking into those panic attacks, not spiking into too much adrenaline. Because okay. that's all a panic attack is, is too much adrenaline in your body at once. Okay. So it's the spike of adrenaline while the rest of the hormones are low that causes us to freak out. Okay. And so it's really important to do that. And then also find ways to keep your body calm. Meditation is really good, I think, to learn how to keep your body into a calmer state. You can um, learn to do some breathing techniques. Uh, I used to be a yoga teacher. I'm really big on yoga and breathing. If you feel it coming on, it's good to learn ways to calm yourself down. Um, take, you know, three really deep breaths and count them as you're inhaling and count them as you're exhaling. And most of the time when, when people learn how to do this, they can actually talk themselves back out of a panic attack and calm themselves back down. Wow, that's But it's got to be something we're working on every day. And, okay, and tell us a little bit more about the neurotransmitters. I know you did a little bit, but how can they make yeah. us happy? Neurotransmitters are the major chemical messages of the brain. So the neurotransmitters are everything our brain tells our body to do. We have neurotransmitters for our digestion. We have neurotransmitters for our movement. We have neurotransmitters to tell us when to take a deep breath. It's how our brain tells our body to function. But they are also, so there's hundreds of neurotransmitters in our body all the time. What I look at are the major chemical ones in the brain. So when I say neurotransmitters, they're just the chemicals in the brain that are telling our body what to do. So we have serotonin, which is the happy chemical. And serotonin is our one that can improve our mood and actually helps us sleep well too, but it's the biggest one for improving our mood. Um, the others are endorphins and most people think that endorphins are the happy hormone but they're they're more the hormone that gives us um, a pain-free feeling and they're also the hormones that give us a blissful feeling that all is well feeling okay. it's like the biggest way to explain endorphins is if you've been for a walk or you've been dancing or you've been Moving your body, that feeling of just all is well for the moment is mm -hmm. the feeling we get from endorphins. Mm -hmm. 
It's also okay. the hormone we have after giving childbirth. So it's that, that calming all is well, blissful feeling. And then we have dopamine, which is also our feel good hormone. Um, it helps you feel energized. It also helps with our focus, our motivation. It helps us feel like we are in control. And dopamine is, um, a non adrenaline hormone. It's, it's more of a calming one. And then we have the GABA, which is the cooling one. It, it cools you down, which is also good to mention that the GABA that you can buy over the counter is really good to just take when you need calming down. So okay. if you're feeling a panic attack or you're feeling really stressed one day or you're feeling out of control, you're feeling un unmotivated or you can't focus, that's a good indicator that your GABA is low. And it's, okay. it's not that we're suppressing symptoms, it's that we want to take what we need to balance us out and that feeling will go away. Um, and then most of you know what adrenaline is, but adrenaline is our motivator hormone. It stimulates you. It helps you respond to stress. And then it's also part of our flight or fight hormone. So we have the adrenal glands, which are actually on our back, back here. They sit on top of our kidneys, and they're like the size of a grape. There are stress glands, and whenever we're stressed, they produce adrenaline and insulin and cortisol to help us deal with it. And it puts our body into what is called a flight or fight mode. Well, that's good. And that used to be like in the old days when a bear was chasing you and you would either run or you're going to fight back. Well, now we don't have to worry about that so much as it's a bad phone call, it's traffic, it's waiting in line at the grocery store, it's planning a party. All of that is still putting your body into flight or fight mode all the time. And what's happening is we are constantly making adrenaline and making it until our adrenal glands quit working. And because our adrenal glands, the adrenaline is the motivator in our energy also, when our adrenal glands become so depleted and so stressed, they just quit working. They quit working altogether. And when they quit working, that's when we fall into fatigue. That's when we're tired. That's when we need coffee at, in the morning and then coffee at lunch and then a coffee at 2 <laughs> o'clock just to keep us going. So that's one symptom. If you're needing caffeine to get you moving, if you're needing a motivator, if you're needing something to help you focus, like a stimulator, coffee or a Red Bull or, mm -hmm. you know, sugar, if you're needing that, your adrenal glands are already in adrenal fatigue. That means they're not working for you because if they are working for you, you have energy on your own. So one of the things I look at is to um, adrenal adrenal fatigue. And so if you're feeling those symptoms, that means you've already been stressed too long and your adrenal glands need some support. And in my book, I actually have some foods that really help the adrenal glands. You want to look at high protein, high fat foods. Actually, even sodium is really good for the adrenal glands because we need that iodine, the sodium to keep them going. And you want to eat a diet that's really high in protein and veggies for your adrenal glands. Giving your body that protein is going to repair your adrenal glands and bring them up out of the adrenal fatigue so that they can work again for you. And it, it takes a while. I mean, you didn't get that way overnight, and it takes a while to repair them. And there's also some really good herbs that help repair the adrenals a little faster. It's important that you do avoid caffeine and sugar. If you're feeling tired already, that's the first thing we want to grab, but they actually stress your body more. Um, and then just the last one is melatonin, which everybody takes melatonin when they want to sleep, but melatonin actually is a chemical messenger in our body. It's actually a messenger of the brain that affects your sleep and helps you dream and helps you sleep soundly. Um, it also helps you keep in tune with your body by responding to seasonal shifts, and it's also the hormone that regulates your inner clock. 
So how your body knows the day and night, your inner clock. And so those are the major neurotransmitters that we have to look at and we have to keep healthy or we're not going to feel good and we're not going to feel health, um, healthy or happy. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, well, this is a lot, and I think people should pick up your book for sure. Um, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we will... Um, and the day of the uh, broadcast and the feature, we have a chat room on TalkStoryTV.com. I'd like to invite you to be at the chat room and um, answer any questions people might have. Oh, great. I would love to. Yeah, that's always fun. I love to answer questions. And also, yeah, if, definitely. Uh, if anyone can't be at the um, broadcast, Come to tvbackstory.com and see Cammie's guest uh, blog, and you can make comments there and ask questions as well. Thank you.